Geeks! Welcome to another video. So today we will be discussing about the Ramachandran plot. Now in this particular series we are going to discuss important concepts for your GATE 2022 examination. Without much further ado, let's start with this series and this video. So firstly, in this video, I will be discussing about the Ramachandran plot. Now, Ramachandran plot is one of the most frequently asked questions and one of the most simplest one to attempt if you understand the concept. Now, Ramachandran plot is basically based on the understanding of the peptide bond. So in the video, first we will understand the peptide bond and the different linkages of the atoms. After that, we will see what the plot actually suggests. So the Ramachandran plot is used to predict the structure of a protein, whether the protein will have a alpha helical structure or it will be a beta pleated sheet or a ribbon, whatever. Okay. So first, let us see some details about the peptide bond. Now a peptide bond is formed when two amino acids are join together and they actually undergo a reaction called dehydration where the water molecule is liberated. So each amino acid has an amino terminus NH2N and a COOH N, right? So NH2N, COOH, NH2N, COOH. Now the OH of one amino acid goes with the H of the second amino acid to form water. And what remains is the C double bond O NH, which is nothing but our peptide bond. So you have the part from one amino acid. So this amino acid's N terminus is over here, amino group is over here, and it has its R group. The R group depends on what kind of amino acid it is. Then the second one, the COOH group is at one end called as the C terminus. And this is the R2 of the second amino acid, the alkyl side chain of the second amino acid. The same structure I have drawn over here. So this is the end terminus of the first amino acid. This is the side chain of the first amino acid. This is the COH, NH. This is the second side chain alkyl group. And then we have the C terminus of the second amino acid. So together this forms a peptide bond. So this peptide bond I will highlight over here. Now what is the speciality about this peptide bond? Now carbon over here is in double bond with this oxygen. Oxygen usually has two lone pairs of electrons. We all know this. Nitrogen has one lone pair of electrons. Correct? Now what happens is resonance takes place. So whenever there is a double bond and a lone pair in proximity, they are going to get exchanged. There's going to be something called as resonance. So what happens is this double bond comes over here and nitrogen uses its lone pair to form a double bond with this carbon. So what we get is a structure like this. Right? Now since nitrogen has used its lone pair, it will get a positive charge. Whereas this oxygen has got its lone pair back, so it will be a negative charge. So what you see is at one span, the double bond is between carbon and oxygen. And at the other span, the double bond is in between carbon and nitrogen. When this was studied further, what it was observed is the peptide bond actually has a partial double bond character okay so it doesn't have a bond length exactly of a single bond neither does it have the bond length exactly of a double bond it has a partial double bond character so we commonly represent it like this wherein we are showing a dotted line saying that at some point there is a double bond between the carbon and oxygen and at some point there is a double bond between carbon and nitrogen so your peptide bond is not a single bond, neither it is a completely double bond, it is a partial double bond. And 
because of this double bond character of this particular peptide it does not rotate so no rotation is possible we know that single bonds can rotate now since this has a double bond character no rotation of these bond can occur so this is like a stiff neck of the protein you can't bend these bonds so then what are the bonds that can be bended the bonds that can be bended are the other bonds now a particular name is given to this peptide bond we represent it by the letter omega just remember it a number of times questions are asked now the value of omega can be either 0 0 degree or omega can be 180 degree when will omega be 0 degree when the peptide bond occupies a cis conformation cis is when both the groups are at the similar side and it will have 180 degree when it is a trans configuration okay so either the omega will be 0 or it will be 180 there cannot be any rotation of the peptide bond clear now let's go on to the other bonds that are present can you see there is a bond between this carbon right here and the carbon of the peptide now this particular bond which i'm highlighting in blue is a single bond which is capable of rotation so it can rotate right and this bond is said to be our psi bond it's represented by psi so you can remember as cc psi so cc bond is represented by psi and there is another bond that is free to rotate which is between the nitrogen and the carbon right so another bond between the nitrogen and the carbon over here again this bond is also free to rotate so this particular bond is said to be the phi so that is psi this is the phi bond so there can be rotations between the cc or there can be rotations between the nc this is represented by the psi angle and this is represented by the phi angle note it down somewhere that cc is what is the psi bond and cn is the phi bond so only these two bonds can rotate and depending on the steric hindrances offered by the r groups of the amino acids these particular bonds can have different different bond angle values and the scientist ramachandran he basically studied what are the different conformations that these psi and phi can take whether it what from 0 degree to 180 degree what are the different permutation combination possible with this psi and phi okay so based on that he devised or he gave this ramachandran plot so let us understand what the plot is so basically as you can see it is a box that is divided into four quadrants it is a plot of the angle psi versus phi so on the y axis we take psi and on the x axis you take the angle phi very important question frequently asked what is the angle taken on the x axis and what is the angle on the y axis see on the y axis we have psi and on the x axis we have phi now if you can remember we said cc psi so this cc bond is nothing but the psi and what is phi phi is cn bond remember so this is the plot now at the center where this line cuts the x axis it is zero and where this horizontal line cuts the y axis that is also zero to the left we have the negative values so this is from 0 to minus 180 and this is from 0 to plus 180 similarly this is from minus this is 0 so the bottom is minus and the top will be plus 180 
Now why zero and one eighty? Because the bonds can either be zero degree or one eighty degree. Angles between them are only possible. So if you look carefully in this first quadrant, in this first quadrant, what you will find is you have values from zero to minus one eighty. That means whatever values you are going to find here, they are going to be minus. This is zero to minus one eighty. So again, in this particular part, what you will find is minus. So here, both the psi and phi angles will be minus. I think I should use this graph, right? So this would be minus and minus. Correct. Now, when you move over here, this is the positive end. So this will be positive. That is, the phi will be positive. Psi will be negative. Then over here in this quadrant, you will have the psi be a negative value. However, the phi, as you can observe, is a positive value. Sorry, the psi is positive, phi is phi is negative, and ultimately over here both are positive. Psi is also positive, and uh, phi is also positive. I think I'm using the words oppositely. I'm sorry if I did that. This is psi and this is phi. Okay, so this is the confirmation. Minus minus here, here you have minus plus, here you have plus plus, and here you have plus minus. Okay, and after studying a number of proteins, what he observed was that proteins that have a angle of psi and phi, minus and plus, they are usually here in this quadrant. Over here, so he found that most commonly proteins adopt structures that fall into this quadrant, where your phi value is negative and psi value is positive. Like they have marked over here, you can see this point over here. This represents parallel beta sheets. So parallel beta sheets have the phi value of Minus one one nine and psi value of plus one one three. Similarly, you have parallel beta pleated sheets. You will see that the right twisted beta sheet is also over here. So at the, this part, you have mostly the beta pleated sheets, and over here you have the collagen triple helix, which you will also find in this part. now you can see that some regions are darker this dark represented structure show that this conformation is highly favored it is allowed whereas where you can see blank spaces that means that those particular conformations are not allowed protein can't be in those angles and why is that that is possibly because of the r group maybe the r group is so bulky that at that particular angle there is a lot of repulsion and hence you can't see anything over there right so that way if you see the beta pleated sheets are over here here you have the right handed alpha helices so right handed alpha helices have the psi value of minus 57 and the Sorry, phi value minus fifty seven and psi value of minus forty seven. They are both are negative, so that's where you find the right handed helix. Right? Then you will find the left hand helix at the opposite corner. Similarly, the beta pleated sheets that were made from the D amino acid will be over here. But you know that in our body, it's mostly the L amino acid. so you have to just remember majorly what you can see so in this quadrant you will see the beta pleated sheets here you will see the right handed helix here you will see the left handed somewhere over here will be collagen and the angles you need to know i will post this ppt along with the angles down below you can record it from there now based on this we can do some sums quickly so let us have a look at the sums so first sum says you have to identify what these letters are which kind of bonds do they represent so let's have a look let's look at the peptide bond first we can easily identify the peptide bond this is c double bond or any so this is definitely the peptide bond over here 
this is also the peptide bond so obviously they have shown you the peptide bond so we can quite obviously figure out that this y definitely must be omega as i told you then here this is the cc bond cc psi so this is psi and the x1 would be phi right so with this we can identify that have a look at this question the question asks the dipeptide with the least rotational barrier that is which one can rotate easily right now we know that why was the peptide bond not easily rotatable or why there's no rotation because there is the this uh, resonance kind of structure which gives rise to a partial bond right and therefore there can't be a rotation so you have to see where this rotation is not possible so if you look at these peptide bonds over here they all are of the similar type right if you look all are similar but have a look at this one what is different is this nitrogen is not attached to an h it is rather attached to a ring so here the delocalization this particular phenomenon will not occur easily and therefore it will remain mostly in this particular form and therefore it will have a lesser barrier to rotation because it has a very less partial double bond character so here there will be less delocalization less delocalization and therefore there will be least barrier to the rotation because it is more of a single bond moving on to the next question pretty simple these just look like dangerous structures however it's quite easy to answer so they are asking you tell what this angle is so just first identify the peptide bond life is simple after that so this is the peptide bond c double bond o nh this is the carbon so this is the other carbon this is nitrogen obviously this is carbon so this is an nc bond cc is psi so nc will be phi so the answer is option b very simple okay come on you all try to answer this one quite simple maybe pause the video and try to see they have asked you to identify x y and z what are the structures that are most predominant over here the easiest to remember is y right here in y we see that both psi and phi are negative and this was where we found a right handed alpha helix right so see where you have a right handed alpha helix that's only in option a so obviously that would be our answer oh sorry it's y no no this is not our answer then let's see why where it is so why says left handed helix no why says right handed helix yes possibly why says right handed helix yes possibly here it says left handed helix so we can easily eliminate two options then x we know is where you usually find beta pleated sheets now the specific type they are not asking over here so we can easily say that this is where would we would find the beta helix if there's still a doubt if you know that right handed helix is here the opposite you will find a left handed helix so z is left handed helix therefore it confirms that this is our option c so that's it for me for today's video hopefully this helped you to understand the concept and helped you to solve also if you have any further concept clarifications you need please let me know down in the comment section and stay tuned for the next video we will be learning how to calculate the isoelectric point of different amino acids i'll see you in the next video bye